Hello, welcome to Master Matic. Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about ratio, rate, and proportion. To introduce what is ratio, I will use this mocha recipe as example. To make a cup of mocha, the basic ingredient is 2 teaspoons of coffee powder, 1 teaspoon of fine sugar, and 3 teaspoons of Mylar. So, how this is related to ratio? We can represent ratio of two quantities in the form of A to B, and we can also represent ratio of three quantities in the form of A to B to C. So, to make a cup of mocha, according to my recipe, the ratio of coffee powder to fine sugar to Milo is 2 teaspoon to 1 teaspoon to 3 teaspoon. The unit of measurement used is number of teaspoon. You can also use other units such as gram to representing the ratio. In this case, the ratio is 10 gram to 5 gram to 15 gram. The unit of measurement now is gram. After you know what ratio is, now we can learn to identifying and determining equivalent ratios. To introduce what equivalent ratio is, I will use this 3 cup of coffee as an example. The first cup of coffee is made from 2 teaspoons of coffee powder, total 10 gram and 50 gram of water. The ratio of coffee powder to water is 10 gram to 50 gram for 1 cup of coffee. The other 2 cups of coffee is made of 4 teaspoons of coffee, which is 20 gram and 100 gram of water. The ratio of coffee powder to water for these 2 cups of coffee is 20 gram to 100 gram. The question is, are the 3 cups of espresso will have the same taste? The answer is yes, because their ratio are equivalent. Another question is, how to prove whether a ratio is equivalent or not? Look at the ratio for the first cup of coffee. We can multiply the ratio of coffee powder to water, which is 10 gram to 50 gram by 2, and see is it the ratio is equivalent to the other 2 cups of coffee, which is 20 gram to 100 gram. If yes, then the ratio for the 3 cups of coffee are equivalent. The other method is divide the ratio for the other 2 cups of coffee, which is 20 gram to 100 gram by 2, and see is it equivalent to the ratio of first cup of coffee, which is 10 gram to 50 gram. If yes, then the 3 cups of coffee are equivalent. See one more example here. If I reduce 1 teaspoon of coffee powder for making 2 cups of coffee, will this 2 cup of coffee have the same taste as the first cup of coffee? Obviously, the answer is not because their ratio is not equivalent to each other. Next is to learn how to simplify ratio of 2 or 3 quantities to their simplest form. The method is similar to how we simplify fraction. Referring back to the mocha recipe ratio, the ratio of 10 gram to 5 gram to 15 gram can be simplified into 2 gram to 1 gram to 3 gram by dividing each quantity by 5. The only rule is the simplified ratio must be reduced to their lowest integers, not fraction, not decimal numbers. Now let's refresh again first, representing ratio of 3 quantities in the form of A to B to C. Example 1, 3 to 12 to 30. Example 2, the ratio is 1 to 4 to 10. And example 3, the ratio is 1.5 to 6 to 15. The second one is to identify and determining equivalent ratio. Referring back to the example 1, example 2, and example 3. Check whether example 1, example 2, and example 3 are equivalent to each other. The ratio in example 1, 3 to 12 to 30, all the quantity can be divided by 3 and equal to 1 to 4 to 10. Therefore, example 1 and example 2 are equivalent ratio. On the other hand, example 3, 1.5 to 6 to 15, all the quantity can be multiplied by 2, which is equivalent to 3 to 12 to 30. Therefore, example 3 and example 1 are, are equivalent to. In conclusion, the ratios of example 2 and example 3 are equivalent. Can you prove it? And the third one, simplify ratios of 2 or 3 quantities to their simplest form. Quantities in ratios of example 1 can be divided by 3 and simplify into 1 to 4 to 10. Remember, ratios must be reduced to their lowest integer. For ratio of example 3, 
1.5 to 6 to 15. 1.5 is a decimal number, it's not an integer. Therefore, we can divide each quantity by 1.5 into 1 to 4 to 10. So now, all the quantity in ratios are in their lowest integer. Some cases, you may need to multiply the quantities to get the lowest integers. Now, let's pause the video for 5 minutes and try this question. The answers are provided at the end of this video. The second part of this chapter is about rate. A rate is comparison between two quantities of different units of measurement. For example, in our daily life, rates are often used to compare two quantities such as speed, acceleration, density, pressure, and many more. The ratio for speed is distance traveled over time taken, and the unit of measurement can be kilometer per hour or meter per second. Depend on the units of measurement, the distance traveled can be in units of km or meter, and the time taken can be in units of hour or second. For acceleration, the ratio is final speed minus initial speed over time taken. Unit of measurement for speed can be kilometer per hour or meter per second, and the time taken can be hour minutes and second. The ratio of density is mass over volume. The unit of mass can be kg gram and the units of volume can be meter cube, cm cube, or millimeter cube. And the last example, pressure, the ratio is force over surface area. The unit of force is Newton, and the surface area can be meter square or centimeter square. Let's see example one. Jovan completed his 21 kilometer marathon in 180 minutes. Calculate his speed in unit of km per hour. The ratio of speed is distance traveled to time taken. The distance traveled is 21 km. The time taken given is 180 minutes. We can convert it into 3 hours, which is divided by 60 minutes. Therefore, the ratio of speed is 21 km to 3 hours, which is also equivalent to 21 km divided by 3 hours, result into a speed of 7 km per hour. The second question is about calculating the acceleration in units of kilometer per hour square. A car racer initial speed is 10 km per hour for the first 5 km journey. He then speed up to 100 km per hour in just 10 minutes. In this case, the ratio of acceleration is equal to change in speed to time taken. The change in speed is equal to 100 km per hour minus 10 km per hour, which is equal to 90 km per hour. Then, time taken equal to 10 minutes, which we can divide by 60 minutes to convert it into 0.6 hour. Substitute this value into the ratio. Therefore, the acceleration equal to 90 km per hour divided by 0.6 hours, which result into acceleration of 150 km per hour square. Let's see the third example. The mass of an unknown cube is 5 kg. The cube side's length is 10 cm. Determine the density of the cube in units of gram per centimeter cube. The ratio of density is mass to volume. The mass given is 5 kg and we can multiply it by 1000 to convert it into 5000 gram. The volume of cube is 10 cm multiplied by 10 cm multiplied by 10 cm results. 10 cm cubed. Therefore, we can substitute this value into the density ratio, which is equal to 5000 gram divided by 10 cm cubed, which results into a density of 500 gram per cm cubed. And the last example is about pressure. A force of 1000 newton is applied onto the piston. This result a pressure of 500 newton per meter square is exerted onto the fluid. Calculate the area of piston in meter square. Ratio of pressure is force to area. The force is given 1000 newton. 
and the pressure is 500 newton per meter square. Therefore, 500 newton per meter square equal to 1000 newton to area, which is also 1000 newton divided by area. Therefore, the area is equal to 2 meter square. Now, let's pause the video for 5 minutes and try this question. The answer are provided at the end of this video. Now, let's move to proportion. When the ratio of two pairs of quantity are the same, the quantities are in proportion or they are proportional to each other. Let's see the ratio of example 1, 3 to 12 to 30, and the ratio of example 2, 1 to 4 to 10. If we can change all the quantity in ratios 1, either by multiply or divide to the same quantity as ratio in example 2, therefore, we can say ratio of example 1 and example 2 are proportional to each other. So, to do this, the ratio of example 1, all the quantities can be divided by 3, equal to 1 to 4 to 10. And this is also equivalent to ratio in example 2. Therefore, the ratio of example 1 and example 2 are proportional. Besides using divide, we can also use multiply method. For example 3, 1.5 to 6 to 15, to check whether it is proportional to example 1, which is 3 to 12 to 30, the ratio of example 3 can be multiplied by 2, which is equal to 3 to 12 to 30. So, all the quantity are equal to the quantity in example 1. Therefore, ratio of example 3 and example 1 are proportional. Let's see this question in another angle. For example, if I say the ratio of example 1 and example 2 are proportional, and I change one of the quantity in example 2 as unknown. Are you able to find the unknown quantity in ratio example 2? To do this, there are two methods you can use. The first one is unitary method. Unitary method is like what I do in the previous example. We use multiply or divide the quantity of the ratio so that both ratio quantities are the same and are comparable. The second method is cross multiplication method where we only require two quantities from ratios of example 1 and two quantities from ratio of example 2 and do the cross multiplication to find out the unknown value. Now we see some question regarding ratio, rates and proportion. See this example, given a to b is 3 to 5 and a plus b is equal to 160, find the value of a and b. To do this, you can use the cross multiplication method like what I showed before. And you can rewrite the ratio into the fraction form, which is equal to a over a plus b equal to 3 over 3 plus 5. Because a equal to 3, b equal to 5, therefore a plus 3 is 3 plus 5. The statement also say a plus b is equal to 160. Therefore, you can rewrite a over 160 equal to 3 over 3 plus 5. Then you solve the addition, which is equal to a over 160 equal to 3 over 8. Now you can do the cross multiplication. You will find a equal to 60. Instead of find the value of a first, you can also do this way. Find the value of b first. Rewrite the ratio b over a plus b equal to 5 over 3 plus 5. And then repeat the method like what I showed in previous slide. You will find out the value of b is 100. Since written in the statement a plus b equal to 160, we found that b is equal to 100, therefore a is equal to 60. Both methods will result the same answer. Given a to b is equal to 3 to 5 and b to c is equal to 2 to 6, find the ratio of a to b to c. We do it step by step. Given the ratio of 3 to 5 can be multiplied by 2 and the ratio of 2 to 6 can be multiplied by 5. This is because we want to make the quantity b of both ratio into the same numbers, which is 10. Then, we can rewrite the ratio 6 to 10 to 30, which is the ratio of a to b to c. Now, let's pause the video for 5 minutes and try this question. The answer are provided at the end of this video.
And the last part of this chapter is the relationship between ratios, rates and proportion with percentage, fraction and decimal. This is the easy one. For example, 10% can be written as 1 over 10, which is also equal to 0 0.1. And the ratio is 1 to 10. Conversely, if we are given a ratio of 1 to 10, it can be written as 1 over 10, which is also equivalent to 0 0.1 or 10%. Now, let's pause the video for 5 minutes and try this question. The answers are provided at the end of this video.